experience that I had with the birth of my second child, mm -hmm. who was what I was fortunate enough to have right here in Washington State, right here in Bellingham, and it was a night and day difference in experiences. Mm -hmm. Because here in Washington State, you're very fortunate to have an environment in which really supports the birthing person. So what that looks like for me is when I showed up in that space with my whole self, <laughs> my questions included, and my partner who, let's just say, English isn't his first language. We were welcomed and we were accepted and we were listened to and all the things. We had the support. So it really, it really shifted me. Mm. And it really impacted me because I always say my births birthed my business. You know what mm. I mean? So it's power in that. Hey, Islanders, and welcome to episode 200 of the Commando Voice. Today, I get to speak with a business advisor for the Center for Inclusive Entrepreneurship, as well as the owner of MelanatedMaternityEssentials.com. Please welcome Kirsten Campbell. Hi, I'm Brandon Erickson, and you're listening to the Camino Voice podcast, where I interview local business owners, comedians, singers, and more. I dive into their backstory to find out how they got where they are, what are some of the tips for you to do the same, and find out where they're going. Tune in every week as I interview more of the people you see every day. Hey, Islanders, and welcome to another episode of the Camino Voice, where we release a new episode every Tuesday. Hope you guys are having a good Tuesday. Um, I was on and off sick last week, uh, and uh, this weekend was kind of a recovery weekend. Um, we also hosted a bunch of teenagers and uh, our nieces and nephews to have a little game night party, uh, and that was fun. Had a good time with them. Uh, whew, they're crazy, but you know, uh, what, what else are they, right, uh, at that age? Um, guys, we made it to episode 200. 200. That's a lot of episodes. In fact, we've marked past the four-year anniversary of the Camino Voice. Um, so yeah, just huge shout out to everyone. I uh, really appreciate all the support. Um, those people who have continued to listen, uh, who every once in a while pass me in the marketplace and say, hey, I listened to your podcast. Um, really appreciate all that. Uh, I love uh, talking to so many different people from all sorts of backgrounds. Um, and all sorts of businesses and um, people in this community. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's hard to believe that I did this, started this four years ago. Um, and uh, it's, it's been a crazy time. Uh, and, and I'm actually not going to spend too much time uh, on this podcast because obviously we actually have an interview here. So I do think I'm going to release a one more uh, episode um, of the podcast, but that I just snuck ahead of myself, but there's my announcement. Um, this will be the final interview episode of the Camino Voice. Um, I have thoroughly enjoyed every of every one of my guests that I've had on this podcast, um, especially you know the repeats and the people I've gotten to know so much through this. And um, so I'm going to dive into uh, maybe next week, but next week might be a little crazy because in between Thanksgiving and Christmas, but sometime before the end of the year, I will release a final episode that I'll kind of dive into the background of the podcast uh, as far as why I'm looking at uh, changing it and, and not continuing it in the format that it is. Um, but uh, just a huge shout out and thank you to everyone who has listened to the episode, even if you just listened to one of them. Uh, even if that was your own, uh, I just appreciate everyone that's out there that has listened to and supported the podcast. Um, and, uh, it's been such an amazing run, uh, and it's accomplished a lot. Um, it, it may not have ever grown very big, um, but not every podcast does. And, and this one more so than others, because, you know, my target audience is, is very small, um, obviously, because someone in the middle of Wisconsin doesn't care about Camino. So um, obviously my, my demographic that I was going to was my target market was very small. Um, but in that, it accomplished a lot. I was able to interview and talk with and meet with so many other business owners, um, people within the community, both local uh, on Camino and, and in Stanwood, uh, as well as in Mount Vernon. And, and it's introduced me to people on Whidbey and in Bellingham. Uh, Bellingham? Yes. Yes, I think so. Uh, and beyond. So, um, you know, it's continued in that way. And it's been such a huge 
thing for me. Um, when I started this podcast, um, I was known as Bert, uh, Jeff's son. And that's, that's how people knew me around Camino Island. Um, and, and now they know who I am. Well, at least some people do. Um, but anyways, uh, so like I said, I'm going to do a whole podcast episode on this. Um, so I don't want to spend too much time on this episode. Um, but I did want to just say thank you to everyone out there. But for the final episode, my final interview episode uh, of the Camino Voice, this is a really good episode. Uh, I was very excited to finally get Kirsten on the podcast. Um, she, as I mentioned, is a business advisor uh, for the Center for Inclusive Entrepreneurship, which helps bring entrepreneurship, education, and advising um, to those groups that don't typically get that, um, that it's maybe harder to find for them. Uh, if you're not in the typical you know, box, uh, sometimes it's harder to find funding or information or um, you know, any of those things. And so... Much like Christina Hines, um, she helps businesses get off the ground. She helps, I mean, establish businesses or if you're just getting started in business. Um, and if you fall in any of those uh, groups that are typically excluded or at least forgotten about um, in the mainstream, um, they're there to help out. Uh, they're, they're trying to even the playing field. So um, very cool, uh, all the things that she's done. Um, and, uh, I'm excited for, uh, you guys to hear this episode and hopefully give you guys some more tools and information. Um, uh, so if you guys are out there, uh, and you're struggling in that, in the crazy business world, um, I hope it can help you. Um, so I, like, I will link to their, their website, um, how to get in touch with Kirsten. Uh, you know, that way you have some options of how to actually, uh, get in touch and take the next step, which the next step would be reach out to Kirsten, say hi, uh, say that you heard about her on the podcast. Cause that would be awesome. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, you know, these resources are out there and they're free. Uh, and if you are a business person or have been in the business world, you know that nothing is free. Uh, so, uh, you know, you might be skeptical, but really these, these people that are these advisors, um, it, it it's, incredible to me that there's these people out there that are these experts that are able to sit down with you for free and help you and your business. So um, be sure to do that. Um, and you're going to learn a lot from her in this episode as well. So without further ado, here's my final conversation. Uh, but uh, also my conversation with Kirsten Campbell. Hey, Islanders, and welcome to another episode of the Camino Voice. Today, I'm here with the business advisor for the Center for Inclusive Entrepreneurship, or CIE. Uh, welcome to the podcast, Kirsten Campbell. Thanks so much for having me, Brandon. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. So before we get started, tell us a little bit about Kirsten. Oh, man. How much time do you have? <laughs> seriously, seriously. Anything you would like to know in particular, uh, we can talk about. Yeah. What's kind of your, where'd you grow up? Uh, for me, I primarily grew up in Oklahoma. Okay. So the Midwest, <laughs> the Bible Belt, as some know it. Um, I come from a very tight knit community. Mm -hmm. uh, I come from a very family oriented background. For me, what that looks like is growing up next door, uh, my neighbor was my grandma. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my grandma was blessed enough to have 12 children. 12. You know what I mean? So I had six aunties or five aunties and six uncles. Wow. Yes. And it was a blessing. It was a blessing. And uh, something else that's like really special about my family that I love to make mention of is the fact that back then when my grandmother was having her children, she actually had to utilize a community midwife who actually was a cousin of ours. Okay. And this midwife was able to not only deliver my grandmother's children, but literally all of the black and brown children in our community. Okay. Back then, because back then we, we we didn't have access to like the hospitals, for example. Right. So we were having babies at home. Yeah. And, and probably it was safer to do so. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I just wanted to share that. That just came up. No, that's great. Yeah, it's it is crazy how. I mean, there's a lot to go, but it's crazy that how short ago, like what you're talking about, the hospitals, the schools, the, mm -hmm. it's not long. Oh man, it's, it really isn't. And it, it's like incredible because I have conversations with some of my aunts and they're telling me like, oh, you know, we experienced segregation. 
Like, I was in second grade, third grade, and all the things. And I'm like, are you serious? That really happened? You know what I mean? Like, it's interesting. It's interesting, you know. Uh, definitely appreciate my elders, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, something else about growing up back home for me that's important to share. Uh, I attended an HBCU. Okay. So that's short for Historically Black College and University. I okay. attended Langston University, class of 2012. Shout out. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, um just just love everything about growing up back home. Yeah. yeah. For sure. And I, I love bringing that same energy everywhere I go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. What was it like growing up for you there then? Uh, I would say routine. I would say the word love comes up. The word inspired comes up. The word just whole, mm -hmm. happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a really awesome time growing up. We we stressed, but we didn't stress about the things that people are stressing about these days. Yeah. You know, just a different time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then as you were growing up, going through middle school, high school, um, was there any career path that at that time you were looking at is, is what you wanted to do? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it went archaeologist, uh, first African-American female president, lawyer, psychologist. Okay. And, and that was that was the path. All right. <laughs> awesome. Well, those are all still possible. So Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. If if one wanted it, but now we on this business tip, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's all good. You can always bring your passions with you wherever you go and whatever that looks like for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, when you were looking at colleges then and, and universities, mm -hmm. what did you end up studying then? Psychology. Okay. Psychology. And I actually have to credit my mom for that path or that career choice because my mom was actually in the same space. She was very hands-on with the community. Mm -hmm. um, for her, she specifically worked for Shawnee Housing Authority. She just recently retired. Shout out to my mom. <laughs> <laughs> she put in over like, you know, 30 some odd years there. Wow. And what she really showed me was it's not about the money. It's really not about the money. It's mm -hmm. about being of, of service to others. And what does that look like to you? Yep. So what that looked like to me was, for example, mm -hmm. if it's the holiday times and we have elders in the community and they, they sick or shut in or maybe they're not able-bodied enough to get out there and get groceries, well, guess what? Who was delivering them? That was me and my mom. And yeah. she was off the clock. So that passion translated you know, into me wanting to show up and be a service and others in the same way. Yeah, that's really cool. And so when you were looking at psychology, was that what you were looking into then is, is kind of helping out in that field? Absolutely. And I just love how the human mind works. And I love like behavior. I'm just mm -hmm. really a nerd when it comes to all that stuff, to be honest with you. But yeah, it really was my passion. And it still is my passion. I graduated number one in my class. Nice. Number one. Yeah, true talk. <laughs> Very cool. Well, and, and what you're saying, too, about that, that service mentality mm -hmm. and how you um, work and, and do that, that's, I think, the best foundation for business in general. Mm -hmm. um, the businesses that are successful and that stand out in a community or stand out in the small business world are the ones that always are just, their goal is to serve their customers and to do, serve people. And um and, and other, sometimes it's serving other businesses, but those are the ones that end up being successful and doing well and that you hear about. Mm -hmm. um, it's not the ones that are like, well, I'm jumping into the business because I want to be a millionaire by this age and I want to be able to do this, this, and this for myself. And mm -hmm. like, it's not the p person that jumps in it for money. It's mm -hmm. the person that jumps in it for others or for what they can bring. Mm -hmm. So. Interesting perspective. Yeah. Mm hmm. I would, I would, I'm in agreement, but I, I would uh, just also consider those individuals who make it and you, you never hear about them. Yeah. You just don't hear about them, but they're very successful. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Absolutely. I just hold space for everyone in that line. Yeah. Well, and I think, I think that's the other piece. I think that's a really important piece in business as well is that you have that ability. Mm -hmm. You can say my goal for my business is to have work-life balance mm -hmm. um, and to provide for my family or create the service for my community mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be on the front page of Forbes it doesn't yeah. ever have to get mm -hmm. to a higher level Ew. you don't um, even have to have you know a million people in the room it could have three and you'd be just as <clears throat> impactful mm -hmm. yeah it's that idea of focusing and, and really pouring everything you can into that the people that you're working with regardless Absolutely. if that's a million or that's like you said three yeah 
Um, I agree. So, yeah, I think the idea behind what success is, I think this is changing, especially even in the entrepreneurship or the small business world. It's becoming less of, well, I have to get to the next level. I have to get to that next thing. It's okay to just be where you are um, and not have to have three ideas to grow your business Mm -hmm. or 10 extra business. Mm -hmm. You can just be where you are. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. I think it has a lot to do with that individual's personal goals yes. and what, what they're doing it for, right? Yep. Some people do things because it's their passion or it's their hobby and it turned into a business. <laughs> and, you know, and some people are out there really trying to build generational wealth, really mm-hmm. trying to, you know, create impact. So mm-hmm. it depends on the goals of the individual. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you can be content, you know, with, you know, with whatever that looks like for you, no matter if it's like high commercial success or not. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think that's that's really important to be able to everyone to be able to choose what they want mm-hmm. and how they're going mm-hmm. to do and it. be happy with it. Yes. Yeah, for sure. So then once you graduated, then where did you go after that? When I graduated... You know, it was really one of those moments where the sky was the limit. But for me, what that looked like was working for the state, working for child protective services and eventually mm. adult protective services and pouring my energy into into those spaces. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And during that course, ironically enough, again, now tell me if I get long winded. I'm one of those people. You are I good. Talk. You're good. <laughs> I actually found myself in a situation where one of my parents was having some health issues and I had to move back to uh, my hometown, which was probably like 40 minutes away from where I was working. So what that looked like was I had to leave the state and I had to take a job that was, you know, kind of, you know, beneath the pay that I was accustomed to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And during that time, you know, it really tested me. It tested me. And in the course of that event, I happened to find myself to be expecting with my first child. And it was just a lot of pressure reading all the information out there about, you know, what does navigating through birthing systems look like for black women in America? And that was that was 2017, 2018. I I told you I was a nerd. Right. So (laughs) for me, that looked like I bought every book. I read every article and I I dug in and how that showed up in my personal life was at work. I was able to understand when I was met with some of those like biases or I don't even know the I'm trying to be as soft as I can be about it. But I want to be honest with you. Right. So what that looked like for me was showing up to work to have a co-worker who literally had the Confederate flag tattooed on her ankle, who literally blasted Donald Trump news 24-7, 365. Hey, I don't judge. What you do is what you do. But I'm saying be mindful of others. And that created a very toxic work-life balance. And so identifying that what the statistics were saying and what the what the professionals were saying about like stress on black women and during pregnancy, I realized I had to choose me. And so what that looked like was me and my fiance we up and we left. We were blessed enough to go to California after he graduated from uh, OU. Shout out to OU, Oklahoma University, <laughs> but it's still LU. But anyway, <laughs> we were able to go there, and his background um, is in engineering. Okay. So we were fortunate enough to go to another space and just kind of just change, change the trajectory of our future. And I'm real grateful for that experience. Yeah. Yeah, my, my background's mechanical engineering. Come so. on, pound it. <laughs> so, very cool. So then he was able to get a job down in, yes. was it in Southern California or where was it in California? Long Beach specifically. Okay. So beautiful. So beautiful. Wasn't for me. <laughs> <laughs> I was happy when he got that call like, uh, babe, do you want to move to Washington State? Do I want to move to Washington? The Evergreen? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So that was amazing. Yeah. Coming to Washington State and seeing the difference in between cultures, people, places, and things. And, you know, for me, what what I'm really holding space for, honestly, is the experience that I had with the birth of my second child, mm-hmm. who was what I was fortunate enough to have right here in Washington State, right here in Bellingham. And it was a night and day difference in experiences. Mm-hmm. Because here in Washington State, you're very fortunate to have an environment in which really supports the birthing person. So what that looks like for me is when I showed up in that space with my whole self, <laughs> my questions included, and my partner who, let's just say, English isn't his first language. We were welcomed and we were accepted and we were listened to and all the things. We had the support. So it really it really shifted me. Mm. And it really 
really impacted me because I always say my births birthed my business. You know what mm. I mean? So it's power in that. Yeah. What, what do you mean by that? Take that further. <laughs> so it, for me, it was a combination of going through all of these experiences. I was a professional advocate, advocating for vulnerable communities is literally what I've been doing all my life, like yeah. I shared earlier. So when it came down to it and I was in a position where I had to advocate for myself because no one else could, that was very stressful. Right. Now, now you add on top of that labor pains, okay? <laughs> so let me paint the picture for you. My partner, as I just shared, um, he's actually from Cameroon. Okay. He's actually from, like, uh, Africa. So we showed up in the birthing space in California with the birth of my daughter. The doctor, she was nice. She was all the things. But she, too, wasn't necessarily having English as her first language. I believe she was from Russia. So there was kind of that cultural... Uh, mixing and imbalance happening inside of the room and so when he was asking his questions and she was asking her questions but nobody was listening to me you see what I'm saying and here I am again it's the labor oh so and then coming into that second birth experience where I'm like you know what we're definitely going to do things differently I'm going to be more prepared I'm going to be more informed I'm going to be on it like white owned rice okay and just being in that space and seeing how thoughtful and how how just intentional they were and this was at the high of COVID. This was 2020. I wow. think my group was the first group to uh, not have that opportunity to have outside people inside of the birthing room. So what that looked like was my partner having to be my advocate, my partner having to be my doula, and yeah. he, he excelled at that role. You <laughs> could fast forward four years down the line, and here he is today, and he is a doula for dad right here in Skagit County. Okay. And I myself am a doula, but... You didn't ask me about all of that, so <laughs> you take take the wheel wherever you'd like to. Go. Yeah. So um, after that experience, was that what kind of made you start getting interested in being a doula and, and following down that path? Absolutely. Advocacy, all of it is wrapped around advocacy. And I, I just, I love that story about my own family history where I had a granny midwife in my lineage who did that work. And she's in the history books. She's in the museum. That's powerful. And I just wanted to be able to make that option available to all. Accessibility is a real factor out mm -hmm. here. It's a real factor out here. You look at the statistics and they're scary. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, for... Um for us, we had a, a doula, and I remember, you know, I, would, I didn't come from that world when I was growing up. I, I was adopted. Um, my parents couldn't have kids with, um, by themselves, um, so I was adopted. So we never went through that experience. I was also the youngest, so I wouldn't have gone through it anyways. But my parents didn't really know that experience, so it wasn't talked about. It just wasn't part of our growing up because we never went through it. Um, so my wife, who grew up a lot of uh, around a lot of um, midwives and doulas um, was like, well, we want to have a doula there. It's like, what's a doula? <laughs> and, um, but uh, for me, it was very helpful to have a doula there because Brittany tried, I mean, I was, we were young when we got married. Um, we were still young when we had our first, our twins. And um, I'm trying not to <laughs> add all the noises, you guys, my doula heart. <laughs> but I was, you know, she's like, okay, well, you should know this. And, like, here's our birth plan. And here's this thing. So I'd, like, look over them. But I was also doing engineering school at the time. So I'm like, okay, I'll study this a little bit. Oh, yeah, I've got a test tomorrow, though, so I should study for that. Um, so the doula was there. And I always think of the doula now as, like, the coach to the husband. Um, she helps advocate for the wife, but she also tells the husband, like, do this. Don't do this. Uh, <laughs> and the amount of times where she would be like, probably don't do that. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I, I was trying to help. She's like, yep, but that's not helpful. Like, <laughs> it always just helps to have, you know, someone else there to bounce things off of and make you aware of things that perhaps you weren't aware of before. Yep. And it's always, you know, something different. Yeah. And really doula services, doula support looks differently. So I don't know if I had already said this, but thank you for sharing your story with me, you mm -hmm. know, cause you didn't have to. And I appreciate that. You yeah. know what I mean? For real. And so just, yeah. Just doula support looks different for different people. Mm -hmm. That could look like helping, for example, a same-sex couple navigate uh, health insurance options and all of the things that's within their birth plan. That could be helping a single dad try to work it out. It's, it, it looks differently for everybody. Yeah, for sure. But just having access is half the battle. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and having someone that's there, you know, the amount of... When you start talking to um, uh, people that are... are 
you know, pregnant and it's their first, um, or women who have gone through their first, um, it, you just don't know what you don't know. And going into that is such a scary experience. Mm. Um, it's a, and it's, a, it's exciting experience an emotional experience, but you're put in this situation where, and I love our, you know, the doctors and I, they're understaffed and everything, but they've seen this a hundred times. And so your fear and you're like, what do I do? What is this normal? Is it? They don't explain these things because they're like, yep, we're still on track. We're doing the thing we're supposed to do. They and- do have to hit, you know what I mean, their goals and their objectives, you know. And, you know, not every doctor is the same. So it's all about getting to know your care team. And just shout out to my doctor at the birth of my second son because he came all the way to the hospital. He was off the clock. He said, wait wow. a minute, let me go address our questions right now. <laughs> nice. Very cool. So, yeah, I think having that, having that experience, mm-hmm. knowing sometimes it's not even knowing what you can and can't advocate for right. in that environment. Um, and I swear, I'm trying not to go too deep into this conversation, but he's making me do it, you guys. <laughs> so, okay, so I just got to be, I'll be, you know, I tell uh, a lot of the individuals that I work with, you know, you have to get your uh, your pitch down or your little 30-second intro, so I got to challenge myself too. So, Kirsten, what is it that you do? All right, I provide intentional nutrition to melanated and birthing people all across America. What that looks like is, for me, we develop the world's first plant-based maternity formula that really does focus on the needs of rural and melanated people. Mm -hmm. It's a real intentional project of mine, and just, it is my love language right now. Yeah. (laughs) Very cool. What what do you mean by, um, and this might just be me, ignorance on my part, but what do you mean by melanated? By melanated, I'm including all those individuals that have melanin, so that's black women, that's um, Hispanic origin women, that's literally everyone, literally everyone. Yeah. But really, when, we, when I think about those individuals that have melanated skin, for example, what comes up is, for us, we don't get enough vitamin D in a lot of the prenatals that are avi- available mm-hmm. on the line. They don't, they don't include that. They don't think about that. So with me, I was really challenging, you know, traditional norms and going outside of the box. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and honestly, like I said, it is my love language, and it wasn't a easy project. I worked all through the birth of, of my children, all through the pandemic, silently on this project. And what that looks like is tapping into our family back home in Africa and mm-hmm. seeing how can we work the land and finding out that there was a way in which to harvest bananas back there and turn it into a sustainable uh Product. So that looked like, for me, packaging material. Mm-hmm. And so I created, we created packaging material, sustainable packaging material, with the purposes of being able to offer a self-care tool to my customers, to my target audience, because I want them to have access to everything, including self-care. And if money is a barrier for you, it's built in. So please, use the packaging, plant it, start a garden of your own. It does wonders for your mental health. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's really cool. And and it is something that just as you, as I, you know, my wife and I have gone through a lot of learning and, and continual learning. Um, but those types of things of all this medicine is made for a very specific group of people. Mm-hmm. And so it, that means by definition, it's not made for other people or at least with them in mind. Mm-hmm. It's not that they're not helpful, but they're right. not helpful to the same extent. Right. It, you know, it really is about like quantity. How much do you get? And looking at that fine print. Yeah. And I'm like, we will have another conversation about that. <laughs> Look, it'll be available in about a week or two. Website dropping soon. MelanatedMaternityEssentials.com. Look for us on Instagram, Facebook, and all of the places. <laughs> yes. And we will have that linked in the show notes below. So be sure to check that out. Um, that's very cool. So then, um, you've been doing this pro you do been doing that project, you and your husband have mm-hmm. been, been working in that. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> how did that get you connected with the center for inclusive entrepreneurship? So going back to my roots, which was really social work or 
being community minded. I'm a resource gatherer. So in my entrepreneurial journey, that's exactly what I did when I felt myself in the pandemic, pandemic and expecting and without a job. I had to, you know, research gather what's available. The hot topic of the day was what grants, you know, or uh, one of those government contracts. So I immersed mm-hmm. my myself in spaces and places to where I could just get all the information and see how can I best use it. And what ended up happening was is a lot of that stuff I couldn't use, but some of that stuff I could. And the ones that I couldn't use, I was able to pass it on to somebody else who could. So what that looked like was reaching back home to my community in Oklahoma and saying, okay, you wanted to do a construction business? Here's some resources and support for that. You want to start a taxing agency? Here's some resources and support for that. What? What you say? You can cook something. Look at this. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. You can't afford that. Okay. You can have some different options if you choose to cook from home. Look into it. Yeah. That's how that translated for me. Yeah. So then how did that connect you with the uh, C- with CIE then? Okay. So specifically, you know, for me, I live in a rural place. So all of the support that was coming, you had to be closer to Seattle in order to access it. Yeah. Or you were lucky enough that he would have a project available online. So when I came down to looking more locally, mm-hmm. what was available, CIE stood out amongst the rest. And, you know, honestly, when I first found them, I was looking at their mission and their vision and their values, and they was talking all that talk that I like. So I'm like, wait a minute. Now, now are they serious? Are they, you know, <laughs> are they just playing? But actually, honestly, they were the real deal. They were serious. Yeah. I reached out. I made that call, and I had made a connection. And shout out to Dr. Herrera. She's the one that invited me to go ahead and apply for the position. And she really supported me throughout the whole process. Really, honestly, Center for Inclusive Entrepreneurship, it's its an awesome place to work. Yeah. It just is. Shout out to all of my coworkers, be it Micah, Juan, uh, shout out to Mike, shout out to Rick, like... Fazia, Isabel, the whole crew. We're small, but we're mighty, and we're intentional. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about um, their mission statement. Tell us a little bit about what they do. Okay, okay. Look, I should have had my uh, notes pulled up, but don't worry. It's coming. (laughs) So the mission of CIE. Our mission is to help people with limited resources in marginalized rural communities start a business, earn a living, build generational wealth, and lead the development of rural places where everyone and everything can thrive forever. Our vision is rural places where everyone has the opportunity to turn their unique gifts into a small business that contributes to sustainable, resilient, and equitable shared community wealth. Nice. Very cool. So what does that look like within uh, within CIE? And honestly, I'm not their spokesperson, but if I had to say from my personal opinion, I think it really does have to boil down to being real intentional. Mm -hmm. And how is it that you're showing up? And are you really thinking about those individuals that are like furthest from um, from access, yeah. furthest from privilege and prioritizing <laughs> them, their mm-hmm. voices, their needs? Because that looks differently. It yeah. looks drastically differently. Right. Well, and one of the things um, in that is when you go to, you know, a lot of uh, society is, is like a bell curve. Mm-hmm. You get the, the major part of the bell curve, which is where most people sit. And then, and then you have the two ends, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're talking about a spectrum where you're trying to help the, the most in need person, that might only be a very, very small community. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you're from a, I don't know, from like a, a news reporting site or whatever, mm-hmm. sometimes that doesn't look as sexy as, well, we helped 10,000 people do X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's. I also think it boils down to the in need part. I think you got to, for me, I'm sensitive because I am a part of the community in which I serve. You know what I'm saying? So when I say in need, I don't necessarily want to picture that individual that's like truly like down and out, even though I do include them. Okay. Everybody can start a business and it's your, it's your God given right to access the information and make it, you know, available to you in, in your search or your endeavors, if that's what you choose to do. But I also want to include other individuals who are just like average everyday people. Mm -hmm. What that looks like in terms of, you know, being in need, it's about being aware 
that's what I think of being aware. And I don't want to say, you know, being educated. I got to be sensitive about the words in which I use, too. It's genuinely about being aware. You want that government contract? Well, how is it? How are you going to be able to? How? No, genuinely. Genuinely. Listen, how are you going to be able to? What is your capacity? What can you do? And, and most importantly, um, what is it that they're looking for? We can talk. You guys want to come uh, meet with me in person? I'll be here, let's see, on the 24th and the 25th. I'll be at EDAS here in Skagit County. And they're going to have a small business conference that's going to include a lot of uh, state and federal agencies. I even heard that Governor Inslee is coming. And yes, I kind of fangirled. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's awesome. So um, what does that look like in, as a uh, business advisor then mm -hmm. on your side? For me, it looks like who I'm scanning the room. Who is that individual that I can see where the wheels are turning in their head, but maybe they're not necessarily raising their hand or coming forward? Like, I'm looking for that individual, and I want to hold space for that person so they can get their questions answered and addressed. And most importantly, we can try to design a plan or a path forward so you can try to execute your business dreams and not even try, do, and succeed and grow. Yeah. So how do you... I guess, what are some of the unique challenges that you guys have seen um, that are faced by entrepreneurs from a diverse background? Honestly, barriers look different for different people, but mm. the first one that comes to mind is access to capital. Okay. You know, we could have a million and one dreams, but if we don't have the cash flow to back it up, it's not going to, you know, do anyone any, any, any justice. It's yeah. not, you're not going to be able to sustain or maintain or create that generational wealth. You might, you know, uh, cause yourself a couple of gray hairs, though. <laughs> <laughs> so does the Center, help, does the, uh, Center for Inclusive Entrepreneurship help in, in walking people through that step? Absolutely, absolutely. We offer 100% free one-on-one -on -one business advising support. And it looks differently in different regions. I personally, I cover all of North Cascades. So that includes Skagit, that includes Stanwood, and um, every other county located inside of the North Cascades. And I'm able to meet that individual wherever they are in their business life cycle. So if that means like just thinking or you're in the middle of it, or whatever that looks like to you. And if you are one of those mature companies, I hope to be able to get you to a place in which we can graduate you to a trusted community partner. And for us, that could look like the SBDC, for example. Okay. And what would a role of a trusted community partner be? So we have a lot of different partners. Um, the SBDC is one of them. It's one of, it's one of the individuals that we work with really closely. Another community partner would be EDAS here in Skagit. So we work with these organizations, including organizations like, I don't know, Workforce and just a lot of places, libraries, uh, community colleges. Partnerships are real and they're important to us, but really we work with our community partners in whatever spaces require additional attention mm -hmm. and support. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what, what would it be around the, the financial side um, mm -hmm. that that uh, people fr um, that are, you know, outside of the norm, why is it so much of a struggle for them to be able to get into those, uh, into financial and things like that? I mean, I don't want to speak for everybody, but, uh, you know, and I don't want to raise my own hand, but <laughs> I think it can be intimidating mm -hmm. coming across uh, information that you, you, you just haven't been exposed to. For example, the idea of having projections and being on top of your sales and understanding, you know, what's the money doing? How's the money coming in? How's the money coming out? And getting real up close and personal with your personal finances. So... You know, it, it looks different for different people, but I hope that I can inspire someone, the next person, anyone, to be able to overcome any of those barriers. I think that they are man-made or self-made, self-designed, and I think that if you uh, at least came to me for that free business advice and one-on-one <laughs> support, that we could work through that and we can really, you know, get you the support and the resources that you need so you can be successful. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and you don't have to like name names or, or anything, but um, can you talk about uh, the success story that you've had with working through, with entrepreneurs? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
I have seen some incredible success stories. I've seen individuals who came into our workshops and they learned how to start an in-home daycare business and they didn't even think it was possible. <laughs> and, you know, seeing that thing all the way through, like all the way through from idea to actuality. Mm-hmm. Incredible, incredible stories I could share in that space. I can also tell you about um, stories and where we've supported farms or agricultural-based businesses and really seen them change the trajectory. Maybe they needed that access to some capital, and we were able to be in a position to offer it to them. Yeah. You know, and it was just that like that's what they needed to get over the hump. That's what they needed to be able to keep their employees and, you know, keep staff and, you know, be able to be operational. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> how does uh, CIE measure its impact and success uh, in, pr- in promoting in- inclusive entrepreneurship? I think that we are fortunate because our metrics look different than others. Mm. And so for us... We're really looking at consistency, right? Yeah. We're saying, is this individual showing up? Are they doing the work? If they're if they all in, we're all in. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's kind of our perspective, and that's kind of like our benchmark, and we are really intentional about that and, and just reaching out and being present and being in the community. Yeah. Are there factors or are there things um, from working in this industry and working in this position where – do you feel like <coughs> with talking with people, you can get a pretty good feel of if they will be successful or not? I would say that it would take, you know, one or two sessions to get a true feel and a true understanding. But generally, when you talk to someone, you can get a feel of where they're at and mm-hmm. what's keeping them up at night. Yeah. And nine times out of ten, it's not what you think it is. Mm. Yeah. How how do you kind of help them work through that? And Because... And, I feel like when I've done just conversation with other business owners or people in professions that are like, Mm -hmm. hey, I may be looking to get out of this Mm -hmm. um, and look at other positions, Mm -hmm. you know, look at starting a business or doing these things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes as you have that conversation, you get to the bottom of it and they don't really need to leave the work they're doing. Mm -hmm. They actually enjoy the work they're doing. They just have this idea of what they want, but Mm -hmm. they can actually accomplish all of that with where they're at. How do you kind of walk through that path with people? You know, we offer a workshop that's called Start Simple. And I really love that title because it really forces you to get really granular with it, right? And for me, I understand that it's real easy to kind of look outside to see, you know, how can we fix or how can we magnify, how can we improve? But really, honestly, taking a minute and a step back and to go internal and see, well, what's going on? You know, where are we with the marketing? How are we showing up, you know, and just just seeing have you done your due diligence first yeah yeah for before sure. taking on an adventure like you know a new project which requires you know investments of time money right. sweat equity yes <laughs> yeah all of those things um <clears throat> for people that are looking at to start a new business um or kind of on that first doorstep what would you what advice would you give them for their kind of their first few steps things to do like you're very, very early. Mm-hmm. Give yourself time. That is what I would say. That is my advice. Give yourself time before you do anything else. Don't be in a rush and a hurry to, you know, get your name set up, whether that be a, a, a license, like a sole prop or an LLC or whatever that looks like. Take your time to do your due diligence because honestly, you really have to look at like things outside of the box. I like to use the example of a coffee shop. And I got to pick on my best friend. Shout out to Miranda Bass. Yes, I'm picking on you. She would love, for example, to uh, start a coffee business. And really excited. Want to get out there. Want to look at potential properties that are available. And, you know, let's get it, you know. But honestly, have you thought about where you're going to source your beans from? Uh, Is it local? You know, so I'm saying that we we got to step back and we got to look at all the angles and we got to say, how do we want to be represented and show up in that space? Maybe you don't want to be the organic option or, you know what I mean, the most right. expensive option. Maybe you're somewhere in the middle and just not limiting yourself. Yeah. Give yourself time. That's how you <clears throat> not limit yourself. By it, That is by giving yourself time to truly explore it. And nothing is done in isolation. Reach out for support. Mm-hmm. Reach out for support. Yeah. 
I think that that piece is so important. Um, my my brother in law who owns the coffee roaster um, for our company. Sorry. No, that's great. <laughs> um, he's been he's been that for me. Like when I when I come and I'm like I'm really thinking about this idea, this business venture, whether it's an expansion, whether it's a new concept, whatever. And he's really good at, at asking those very pointed questions of like, why do you think this is going to be more successful than what you know? What do you think this is going to add to your business? What, how do you think customers are going to receive it? Um, and then like, how are you going to be able to actually execute on this? And how are you going to do? And, and Ooh, what I just heard was team. Who is your team? Who, who's all the people and the players in your world that's going to allow you an opportunity to excel at this? Or are you going to be that entrepreneur that wears all the hats? And what does that look like yeah. to wear all the hats? Right. It's not fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, and again, it's like <clears throat> a lot of times we, as we go through business, we hit these stages of, you know, plateaus mm-hmm. where <clears throat> it's not good it's not bad it's just kind of like you're in this middle ground you're like well i feel like i should be doing more but maybe less um but like it, it, the stage of your life we're in is we've got four kids we've got you know 12 10 and 7 so we're we're in that like crazy time of life where like we're getting through sports season right now and so every evening we have something every saturday we've got two games you know and the <laughs> kids are going every direction so right now is probably not the best time for me to be looking at starting a new location or doing certain things that I know are going to increase my workload to the point where I'm not going to be home for a good chunk of time. Mm -hmm. Um, Because, you know, the girls are 12, so that's six years. But really, it's four years because once they start driving, it's like they're gone, right? (laughs) And they're social. So I know as soon as they can drive, we're probably not going to see them ever again. (laughs) That's cool, though, that you're, like, super involved, and I, uh, I identify with that. I have a, a five- and a three-year-old, so mm-hmm. in my house, we're working on our sight words <laughs> yes. and sharing. Mm-hmm. If you figure that one out, if you could let me know, because we're still working on that one. <laughs> Tell me, i got to ask you, are you sharing anything about the business with your children? Uh, yes, we, we've tried to get them. <clears throat> I've tried to help them, like, uh, take steps. So mm-hmm. like if you do well at home, then I can start bringing you to work. And the mm-hmm. girls are, are 12 now. So they're starting to get to the age where, and they're, they're tall enough and stuff that within the next year or so, or maybe a little bit longer, but they can start doing like scooping ice cream and like yeah. doing that. And they'll do very well in that position. But I also want to see that they're, they're doing well at home. Mm-hmm. So like that means consistently helping with the dishes and not with a bad attitude and not just, I hope they heard you. Uh huh. <laughs> Well, last night I was reteaching my daughter how to scrub a pot. So oh. it's like over and over again, right? You, you <laughs> teach them and I'm like, that's not scrubbing. You're like painting with the cleaning brush. You're not scrubbing them. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. And I am just, uh, it, it, what's coming up to mind for me is looking at like the influencer industry mm. and how kids are coming into the influencer industry. And specifically here in Washington State, we have yeah. like the number one case right now that's like in the uh, media, in the spotlight, gathering attention related to this space. So just thinking about children who are in, I don't know, in in that light and seeing how they start businesses and really it's the parents that's starting these businesses. But again, awareness is half the thing. For me, what that looks like is my son loves trucks. Oh, he loves trucks. And baby, if he had it his way, he'd be on kids YouTube all day looking at those trucks. (laughs) So I'm like, okay, I think uh, there's a a market need here. And, uh, you know, he can't be the only one who likes these trucks videos at the age of three. So how can I test this? Can I run a survey? Maybe he needs his own YouTube channel and all the things. That's a business. That's all I'm saying. So yeah, interesting to think about. Yeah. No, there's definitely those opportunities, um, and there's always new ones and, and ones that are coming mm-hmm. up. Mm-hmm. So, it's yeah, it, it's definitely a weird spot that we're in now, and and obviously, actually, we've just I feel like across the board with almost all of the social media companies right now, they're doing really weird versions of I don't want to use the word censoring, but they're just doing weird versions of algorithm changes. Mm. Mm-hmm. We're like, Deep. and and so like. A lot of the creators that I've listened to or followed, they're like, all of a sudden, we don't make money on one of our highest producing videos. Crazy. That's been there forever. Like, mm-hmm. um, so the the whole industry is continually shifting, and your your paycheck, your your business is based on 
somebody else's platform that they can at any point just turn off. Scary not to be in control. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but how do you how do you feel like when you're talking with business owners mm -hmm. that are <clears throat> um, maybe kind of in a sim similar situation where their their money their their platform and all of that is not under their control or, mm -hmm. or that. How do you kind of coach them or help them through that? I think for me, it's always about assessing. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm one of those, I'm a deep listener and I want you to tell me everything because I want to be able to review everything with you. And once we pull out and extract some of that core information and you can sit there and you can look at it, and you can analyze it, you can get clear on what it is that you need so you can move forward. And if I can help you, I will do all that's within my power to help you, right? Mm -hmm. That's just me. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's, as you gain experience and are in tune with all of that, mm -hmm. you're going to hear something that they're just, you know, they're not, they're going to tell you what they think is their problem mm -hmm. and they're going to be explaining it and talking about it. And then they're going to say one thing as a side note and you're going to be like, wait, what was that that you just oh, said? Uh, did you just say uh, you're paying him under the table? I know you didn't say that. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, there is a such thing as labor and industries, rules and regulations. Just saying. Yes. Yeah. There's always, yeah, and keeping track of all the different things. Yes. And, yeah. And those are always That's changing. why you need a support team, a support system, whatever that looks like for you. And for me, free mm. is for me. So yeah. really tap into those resources, those local resources, be it with the CIE or another community voice organization that can provide uh, entrepreneurial support. Yeah. One-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Well, and I think <clears throat> that piece, I didn't I didn't even, uh, until earlier this year, I really didn't know there was all of these resources available. Mm -hmm. um, I know the Libra Snow Isle Library has done a few different workshops where they talk about little things, but they're, when they happen, mm -hmm. uh, it's not like you can just call someone mm -hmm. uh, at, at Snow Isle about that. So as I've been seeing these things, I'm mm -hmm. like, these resources, like I, I interviewed Christina Hines from the oh, SBDC cool. mm -hmm. and she's like a full on like marketing person that you can ask to get a whole, you know, work with her to build out your whole marketing strategy. Yeah, she's great. She's free. a great resource. Yes. Like it's insane. Like uh -huh. I've, I've paid those people before. They're not free. <laughs> In fact, they're very expensive. Yeah. Those are some of the same tools that we use. We actually use the same exact tools uh, over here at the CIE. And it's it's interesting what you're able to get back from some of those really mm -hmm. in-depth marketing reports. So, yeah, like I said, do your due diligence, you guys. Reach out. It is free. Yeah. It's free. Right. And and the, the, I guess the other piece to that is that, like, there's a lot of free resources online True. and stuff like that. True. But to have someone that ha has walked the road before you, mm -hmm. so knows what they're doing, and then to sit with you for an hour, uh, multiple times, to help understand your business and then help you build that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've w looked at so many online free resources of how to build your marketing calendar, how to build your whatever. Mm -hmm. And I get done, I'm like, but that was kind of tailored towards either e-commerce or mm -hmm. an apparel company mm -hmm. or, or whatever. You know, it's always for something. And so then you're trying to retrofit it for your business. Mm -hmm. And you're like, what well, doesn't really fit my business? These people, like these these advisors will sit down with you and learn your business that's right. and then help you work through that. And I, I, I just think that's so cool. That your market, your industry, your <laughs> business model specifically. What is your business model? Let's discover it. We got to talk about it in order to discover it. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it starts there. Yeah. So that's, I think that's so cool. So for those of you listening, um, if you haven't already, ready check out um like i said we'll have this in the show notes but cie-nw.org check them out um set up a, a you know a meeting with an advisor because um even if you just do it once and you're like oh cool i learned a little thing for my business um again that was for free and that's hard to come by especially in the business world it, all of you guys know that nothing is free so that's right mm. that's right what I like is like the diverseness and like the businesses that we serve. I'm thinking about some of the tribal clients that I have and mm. some of the cultural pieces that they've been able to make by hand and offer that in a way in which feels authentic for them. Yeah. Like, for example, we've had a workshop specifically for makers. So these are individuals that actually like make things. So that could be like wood pieces or whatever. But so it's just having experience about specific industry knowledge that's like so important to tap into. Yeah. 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 And again, being able to connect with other entrepreneurs that are in that field that have mm -hmm. walked that road before you 
because I can tell you the people that I've talked to that are ahead of me in the field, they there's always something that they know that I don't know because they've walked it before. They've already dealt with that problem. You know what's really, really cool? Hmm. We offer uh, another platform that's called 10,000 Coffees. Now, I don't know everything about 10,000 Coffees, <laughs> but come to our website, check us out, get some more information. But this is the part for me. You get an opportunity to hook up with industry-specific <clears throat> mentors. So if mm. you are a coffee business, you can hook up with somebody else who has that experience. Or if you are, I don't know, a food-based business, you can get that type of support, right? So really, really cool. Tap in. I'll tell you more. <laughs> yeah, that's that's great. And I think that that piece is so important, mm-hmm. having those people that are ahead of you on the road of where yeah. you want to go. Absolutely. They can tell you about the pitfalls. They can tell you about the potholes. That's it. Help you that's out. it. That's very cool. You're dropping jewels today. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what do you see as the future uh, for the center? Uh, for the center for, for of inclusive the center entrepreneurship. for inclusive entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. Um, and if if you don't feel comfortable, kind of saying what for the whole center of for inclusive entrepreneurship, you could also talk about kind of your role in it. What do you mm-hmm. kind of see as that future? Overall, I feel that we are growing both uh, in size and in presence. And I think that that's important with the work that we do. That means more people are able to be connected and have these resources, right? And Mm -hmm. ultimately use it and make something of their own and it be sustainable and all of the things. So I think that's the future. Um, In the near, near, near future, we're going to do a lot of like workshops related to agricultural support. Mm -hmm. Uh, We just recently completed a child care course, very successful, had about like nine people graduate. That was awesome. So just always being present. And, and, And another thing, we offer it in the past and probably sometime in the near future, we'll be able to offer it again, a very successful class known as Comadres. Very, very impactful program specifically geared to helping individuals within the Hispanic culture of those individuals who may or may not have English as their first language tap into these resources <clears throat> in their language. Yeah. You know, so like I said, the future will be there. Yeah. Look for us. Very cool. <laughs> and I'm really hopeful for my area, my territory, North Cascades. I'm really wanting to be more intentional. You know, you guys, I haven't been with CIE that long, <laughs> but I am really coming into my own and really being able to be in a place in where I can be more intentional with my efforts so I can get more people on board because this that you're hearing and that you're feeling from me, this is the authentic me. This is who I was before I came to CIE. And I'm real serious about connecting people with opportunities, resources, and support. Like, I'm real serious. So if you're serious about your business, you're serious about your bag, you really will reach out to the CIE. You really will go to their website. And maybe or maybe not, you'll follow me on Instagram at sister, S-I-S-T-A-H dot preneur on Instagram. <laughs> awesome. And be sure to do that all again, have that link in the show notes. So be sure to go down to the show notes for all the things we talked about today. Um, lastly, what type of, uh, events do you guys have any big events that you have coming up? I know you mentioned one in end of October, uh, or mid October. Is that what we said? This, the event that's coming up immediately will be held on both the I believe it's the 24th and the 25th. It's going to be held at EDASC. The address is 16650 State Route 536. Um, They're having the Skagit County Small Business Conference. So I'll be there. I'll have my booth. Come see me, you know, bounce some questions off of me. But more importantly, tap into the resources that are available during the conference. A lot of individuals will be there, be it state agencies like, um, I don't know, like like your Department of Commerce is and things of that nature. A lot of people will be present and they're looking for ways to connect you with the opportunities that they have going on. But going back to what I said earlier, it's about identifying how you can best serve that need. You do need to be aware of the need. Now, this is all like business language and jargon. So that's why I I really hope that you reach out to me so I can kind of like demystify the process for you. So, you know, we only have so much time. (laughs) (laughs) Very cool. And just confirming, that's 24th and 25th of uh, Of, uh, this month. This month. So, so what's the, today is what, Tuesday? Today's 24th. Yeah. So tomorrow, the 25th. 25th. And on the 26th. They will be having the event exclusively in Spanish for those individuals that need that level of support. Nice. 
Awesome. Well, this this podcast will have already will be released after this time, but that's perfectly fine. Um, but but I want to put this out there as a reminder. There are big events like this that go on where they have state officials, they have all sorts of people where you can ask those questions, get mm-hmm. connected. Mm-hmm. Um, There's something else you guys should be aware of as well. The class that we offer almost monthly is known as Start Simple. You can access this class for free at our website, or you can go online at the SBDC uh, and find out more about the upcoming workshops, dates, and times. This is like on a rolling basis, so there will always be an opportunity for you to tap in and connect. Right. So, so make sure you're, you're watching those things because you never know when the next event like this is going to happen. Um, and they're just a great place to learn more, connect with your state officials, connect with the different departments, um, and also meet other business owners and um, you know maybe find someone that works well with your business and you can partner on some other projects or things like that. And I feel like you're uh, rushing me off the microphone, Brennan. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a whole lot more that I want to talk about. Oh, Something yeah. that we didn't mention was yes. how do we support those individuals, for example, that are looking for a little capital either to either start their business or keep their doors open. And yeah. we offer certain supports like the Kiva loan, which is like low interest loan, low barrier loan that you can have access to. Um, we offer additional options as well. Some of our workshops actually include seed funding, so we're able to support our entrepreneurs with actually going out and opening their doors. So, you know, there's different ways that we're out there. We're trying to give you access, and there's more that's coming. Okay. I, I, I'm like, do I speak too soon or do I tell them everything? So <laughs> I'll wait, but just just know there's more support coming, so stay tapped in. And is, is that all on the going to be through the CIE dot or dash North? Or nw.org, that like is on correct. the website? Okay. That is correct. So be sure to save that link so that you guys can mm-hmm. check on that on a regular basis because mm-hmm. as things come out, uh, I'm assuming you guys have a newsletter then, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, okay. yes. So be sure to sign up for the newsletter as well, and that way you're you're informed of all of this information that, that comes out. Awesome. Very cool. All right. Well, I like to end every podcast with some rapid-fire questions. So the first one is, what purchase of $100 or less have you enjoyed the most in the last three months? Oh, that's a good question, Brandon. That's a good question. For me, what that looks like is bugging my little sister, shout out to Lauren Wiggins, to go on Amazon or any place really and find me a necklace that could have my business's initials on it. I really wanted to show up today and, and like rock that chain, have MME around my neck. But um, unfortunately, when you go to customize things, they take a little longer. <laughs> but um, she's paid for it and I'm really happy to share that. Thanks awesome. for the question. <laughs> All right. Um, who is the most influential person outside of your family in your life? Ooh, outside of my family? You know, honestly, the first person that came to mind was my pastor. So shout out to uh, Bell and Farrell Church of Christ. Shout out to Brother Wingo, one of the most impactful individuals that has been present in my life from like a young age. And I take the teachings and the experiences with me always. And I know you only asked me for one, but I'm going to give you a second one. And that would have to be Elton King. This is one of my oldest cousins. He has always lighted the way for me to be better, to rise above. Mm. He actually served. So I have a, a military background in my family. So what that looks like is I was like, I don't know, first grade and I was rocking one of those backpacks from like Afghanistan. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but shout out to him. Shout out to him. Honestly, he's one of those individuals. He's out there making a move in the community that looks like him showing up with 100 coats to give children in need who didn't have a coat. Mm. So it's those life lessons that I'll take with me for life. Yeah, yeah. very cool. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> okay, this is a fill in the blank question. I know this is weird, but I've always wanted to blank. Huh. I know it's blank, but I always want it to blank. Oh, okay. So for me, because I am, you know, an entrepreneur through and through, I want to start a farm. I want to start a farm back home in Brooksfield, Oklahoma. Brooksfield is one of the all-black towns that was founded in Oklahoma. I actually have land there. Now, I don't like the heat and I hate bugs, so I don't really know how that's going to (laughs) work. But, you know, where there's a will, there's, there's a way. So I'll be definitely looking into, you know, business plan models for farms. Can she create a brewery? Can she have a tea house of her own? Can she grow some things that she can source into her own line of protected prenatal multivitamin? Stay tuned. 
We'll see. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who is an interesting or fascinating person that I should interview next? Oh, that is a great question. Who's more interesting than me? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say more interesting. I just said an, an interest. Huh. Huh. Ooh, that's on the spot. Mm. Who would you, I suggest? You can also send someone later as well. Yes, I want to send with someone later, but anyone in the AI space, I want to hear from them. I want to see what 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 they want to have to like share with us. Mm. So there's a lot of things moving over there. Yeah, yeah. How it, it, this is kind of a side note, but have you guys seen anything that has affected your work with the CIE or or entrepreneurs that come from that background, where it's damaging or positive for them? I have a few entrepreneurs who are in that space and looking to uh, tap into that technology and do different things, whether that's like creating a companion AI (laughs) or doing something related to simplifying the tax process. So I'm seeing (laughs) I'm seeing people tap in and that's incredible. And just, you know, word to the wise, a little birdie told me it's going to be a whole lot of uh, money, grants, resources and support coming down from the federal level to kind of bolster this. So tap in. The time is now. You know, and, and another thing, I did t- uh, try my hand at creating an app. And yeah, so let's have that conversation. <laughs> yeah. Period. All right. And lastly, what piece of advice would you give your 20 year old self? Mm, slow down. Mm. Slow down, be present. For me, in my generation, it was go to school, make good grades, you know, keep your head down. That's it. <clears throat> and that's exactly what I did. So I would tell myself to slow down. You don't have to get done right on time. Maybe you want to be a six-year student. No, I'm just kidding. Six years is too long. But (laughs) whatever works for you, just slow down, be present, be mindful. And don't be scared to make connections. Don't be scared to put your neck out. Say, hi, my name is. Can we connect? You know what I mean? I'd love to get to know you. You never know. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. Oh, thanks for having me. Have me again. Yeah, (laughs) for sure. (laughs) All right. And Islanders, I will talk to you on the next one. Well, a big thank you to Kirsten Campbell for joining me on the podcast today. And thank you for listening. And thank you again for listening for all the many years. I really appreciate everyone who is part of this podcast. Um, And uh, yeah, I will be releasing a one last episode. But for this time... I will be signing off. So thank you all for listening, and I will see you on the final episode whenever that comes out. Thanks, guys. Bye.